In the 1950s, in the small fishing town of Minamata, on the western coast of Japan's Kyushu Island, residents experienced cases of a horrendous, mysterious illness. It started with cats dancing, acting erratically, with birds falling dead from the sky and fish floating dead on the surface of the sea. But then cases were seen in children and then in newborns, with symptoms such as loss of vision, paralysis and brain damage. In today's video, we will look at the disturbing history of the Minamata disease, what was the cause and the fallout from the scandal. Before industrialization, Minamata was a typical fishing town in a modest economy. This changed in 1908 when the Chiso Corporation built a chemical factory along the shoreline. The Chiso Corporation was once a fertilizer manufacturer, but over the years it became a petrochemical and plastic maker company. The factory promised jobs and economic growth for the small town of Minamata, and it delivered both. Over time, Chiso became the town's primary employer, its largest taxpayer, and its most influential political force. It's this dependence that created an imbalance of power that would later prove to be catastrophic. In 1925, the Chiso Corporation began dumping chemical waste into Minamata Bay, which had the side effect of destroying the fishing areas. The company made a decision that it would be cheaper to pay off the fishermen in exchange for damaging their fishing environment. Beginning in the 30s, Chiso produced a chemical called acetaldehyde, a chemical used in plastics, solvents and industrial materials. The production process generated wastewater containing mercury compounds. At the time, mercury's toxicity was something known to the scientific community. Industrial research had already identified its dangers, particularly its effects on the nervous system. Minamata disease is in essence methylmercury poisoning. The mercury released as industrial waste enters the marine ecosystem. In Minamata Bay, the mercury discharged from the Chiso chemical factory settled into the sediment. Bacteria in the water converted this inorganic mercury into methylmercury, an organic form that is far more toxic and far more easily absorbed by living organisms. Methylmercury then became absorbed by plankton, organisms at the lower end of the marine food chain. As small fish consume plankton and larger fish consume smaller fish, methylmercury becomes increasingly concentrated at each level of the food chain. This process, known as biomagnification, results in the fish at the top of the food chain containing mercury concentrations thousands of times higher than the surrounding water. For the people of Minamata, consuming these fish meant ingesting high doses of methylmercury. Many people consumed this seafood daily, unknowingly ingesting poison as part of their regular diet. Once ingested, methylmercury is easily absorbed through the digestive tract and enters the bloodstream. It circulates throughout the body and crosses protective barriers that normally protect vital organs. Worst of all, methylmercury is able to cross the blood-brain barrier, which usually prevents harmful substances from entering the brain. It can also cross into the placenta, allowing mercury to enter the developing brains of unborn children. Inside the brain, methylmercury interferes with normal neural function. This interference damages neurons and impairs communication between them. Because neurons in the central nervous system do not regenerate effectively, this damage is often permanent. The areas of the brain most effective include areas which control balance and coordination, along with the visual cortex, which processes sight. Symptoms include loss of coordination, tremors, slurred speech, tunnel vision, numbness, tingling, muscle weakness, rigidity, paralysis and seizures. In unborn children, the effects are even more severe as the developing brain is far more vulnerable. Methylmercury interferes with brain development, preventing normal function of neural circuits. As a result, children exposed in utero develop profound neurological impairments, even when their mothers showed minimal symptoms. What is termed congenital menomata disease often resembles severe cerebral palsy. There is no mechanism to reverse the destruction of the affected neurons. Minamata disease, therefore, represents not as a single event, but a sustained degradation of the nervous system. Despite the knowledge of the dangers of mercury poisoning, Chizo made a calculated decision. Rather than investing in proper waste treatment or altering its production methods, the company instead 
discharged its untreated, mercury-contaminated wastewater directly into Minamata Bay. It was cheaper and easier to simply poison the people of Minamata. For years, the real damage remained invisible to humans. The bay looked unchanged, and fishing continues like it always had. However, animals began to exhibit some disturbing symptoms. Cats lost all coordination, they convulsed and collapsed. Some ran erratically before throwing themselves into the sea. Locals coined this phenomenon the dancing cat disease. They were totally unaware of the true cause. Then, birds soon began falling from the sky. Fish floated dead in the bay at alarming rates. Dogs developed seizures and paralysis. But at this stage, neither Chiso or the local authorities acted. In April of 1956, the first human cases became impossible to ignore. A young girl was brought to a hospital after developing severe difficulty walking and speaking. Her movements were involuntary, her balance was unstable, and her speech was slurred. Soon, her younger sister showed the exact same symptoms. Within weeks, cases similar appeared throughout the town, often affecting multiple members of the same family. Patients suffered numbness in their limbs, loss of coordination, tunnel vision, hearing impairments, tremors, seizures, paralysis, and eventually, comas. Many remained mentally aware as their bodies faded. This disease progressed rapidly, and doctors could find no cause or any cure. On the 1st of May 1956, a doctor by the name of Hosokawa from the Chiso Corporation Hospital said the following. An unclarified disease of the central nervous system has broken out. This doctor was soon able to link high seafood diets to the disease, and it didn't take long for them to draw a connection between the contamination from Chiso to the disease. He carried out an experiment where he fed the contaminated wastewater to a number of cats, many of whom displayed the exact same symptoms. The corporation did not reveal these results to the investigators looking into the disease and ordered that Hosokawa stop his research. In an attempt to hide their culpability, the corporation moved their dumping of toxic waste from the bay to the river. The Minamata River flows past the town of Hachimon. And sure enough, the people of this area also began developing their very same symptoms, and in just a matter of months. By 1959, researchers at the Kunamoto University conclusively identified mercury poisoning as the cause of Minamata disease, and their findings directly implicated the industrial wastewater from Chiso factory. At the point where the wastewater was dumped into the bay, researchers recorded as much as 2 kilos of mercury per ton of sediment. This is such a high level that it would be considered to be economically viable to mine for mercury. This should have ended the debate. Instead, it marked the beginning of a coordinated campaign of denial. The corporation publicly rejected the findings, and they set about funding alternative research designed to obscure the cause of the disease. The company promoted theories suggesting that the illness was genetic, infectious, or caused by poor sanitation. These wild accusations led to victims of the pollution being treated with fear and suspicion, people not wanting to contact the disease and lying the blame with those suffering. There are accounts of families affected by the disease being ostracized. Children affected were bullied at school. Some parents even hid their disabled children indoors to avoid stigma. Others avoided seeking medical diagnosis altogether, fearing the discrimination. As a result, it is thought that many cases went undocumented. Those affected who protested faced intimidation and violence. Fishermen who organized demonstrations were attacked by factory workers. Some protests were even forcibly broken up. Victims were portrayed as agitators threatening economic instability. The corporation's influence extended into labor unions, local media, and political institutions, ensuring that dissident was marginalized and the threat to health was downplayed. Eventually, the Chiso Corporation installed a wastewater treatment system and publicly claimed it would resolve the issue. In reality, untreated wastewater continued to be discharged through concealed outlets. This false attempt to prevent further contamination allowed the company to claim compliance while continuing to poison the bay. Mercury dumping didn't stop until 1968. Responsibility was not solely on the corporation. 
Local and national government officials were repeatedly informed of the growing evidence linking Chiso to the disease. They chose delay over intervention. Japan's post-war economy depended heavily upon industrial output. Companies like Chiso were considered far too important to challenge. Regulatory agencies failed to enforce meaningful oversight. In 1968, more than 12 years after the first official report, and decades after mercury dumping began, the Japanese government formally acknowledged that Minamata disease was caused by methyl mercury, discharged by the Chiso Corporation, and they issued an apology. But by then, thousands had already suffered irreversible damage, and the apology issued was riddled with misinformation. Compensation programs were established, but eligibility criteria were strict and exclusionary. Chiso had paid some amounts in the 1920s and the 1940s, but this was for affecting fishing and not the disease. After months of argument and debate, a compensation scheme was fully reached in May of 1970. Payments for death ranged from the equivalent of about a few thousand dollars, and survivors received a similar one-time payment and annual payments of a few hundred dollars. But the Japanese government sought to protect the corporation, fearful of it going bankrupt. They ensured that the payments were as low as possible. A separate legal battle was launched in 1969, seeking to hold the corporation responsible for the contamination and the disease. Dr. Hosokawa was a key witness, revealing to the courts his experiments, even as he himself was dying from cancer. Other employees too spoke out, highlighting the company's disregard for safety. In 1973, the court found that the Chiso Corporation had been negligent in its handling of the wastewater. The previous low compensation deals were deemed to be invalid, and the court ordered that the company paid tens of thousands of dollars to each person affected, totaling around $3.4 million. But this was not the end. Court cases continued throughout the decades to come, with a recent example being seen in 2023. The corporation was ordered to pay approximately 2.75 million yen per plaintiff to each of 128 previously unrecognized sufferers after the court finally acknowledged that they were victims of the disease. Chiso and the government continue to pay for the necessary care of those disabled by the disease, many of whom need round-the-clock care. The estimated total of people affected, including mild, indirect, and severe, is over 100,000 people. 1,700 to 1,800 people were killed. Cleanup efforts eventually began in the late 1970s. Contaminated sediment was dredged from the bay and sealed beneath layers of soil and concrete. But still, mercury remained embedded in the ecosystem. Chizo themselves would eventually mine for mercury from the sediment, profiting again from the mercury dumped into the water. It was not until 2005 that the area was considered safe and fishing could resume. Responsibility for the Minamata disease is clear. Chizo executives made deliberate decisions to dump toxic waste despite knowing the risks. Government officials chose economic convenience over human life. Regulatory systems failed to protect the public. Minamate is no longer merely a town. It is the name to a debilitating disease. It is a grim warning about the dangers of industries operating without accountability, when victims are silenced, and when justice is delayed until it no longer matters.